Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Dakota, Silver Premier Team Leader of Pink is a New Black, and I have Instagram tips for us today. First of all, why Instagram? So we, we're on Facebook. Lots of us use Facebook. We're, we are familiar with Facebook, and you might be familiar with Instagram, but you might wonder, like, why do I need to do both, okay? So people go on Facebook mainly to connect with friends and family. They aren't really there to connect with brands. And Instagram, people are much more open to connecting with brands and bloggers on Instagram and going there to get beauty tips and DIY info and stuff like that. So um, you can open yourself up to a cold market, people you don't know. I feel like you can do that a lot easier with Instagram, using hashtags and just posting pretty pictures um, getting people to share your hashtags and post photos and tag you in them. We'll get into that. First up, you want to make your profile look attractive and noticeable. As soon as somebody finds your feed, you want them to stop and take a look at it and hopefully follow you and look around and stay. Here's my Instagram profile. It's got my name. It's also got my business name. It's got self-care, healthy living, mom life, some emojis to draw the eye, and to follow Posh with Kelly for product review, bleh, follow Posh with Kelly for product reviews and glimpses into my life. Learn more, there's a link and it, 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 and it links to where you live, um, which is a good way to find people in your area. So when you click this hashtag Posh with Kelly, look what happens. Every post that I make, I tag it Posh with Kelly, Posh W Kelly. That's my brand tag. That's my handle all over social media. I'm not sure why it's not loading for us, but um, people can just click here and click the follow button and see my posts in their feed. Now I suggest putting in the link here, you can just put your posh website or you can put in something called Linktree. Um, it's Linktree, all one word. You can Google that and see what that looks like. I used to use Linktree until I found Maven. And this is what my Maven shop looks like. Maven is an app that I use for follow-ups, for selling. This is a feature within Maven. Um, it also tracks, helps, it also helps me track all of my follow-ups. And anytime I post anything on Instagram, I can tag products in it. So this is one of my recent posts. When you click on that, it, they, it takes you right to the website and they can buy it right there through the link. Instagram only gives you one link to put here. So if you do link tree, when they click it, it opens up to another page and you can link your, your uh, Pinterest, your Facebook, this, that, your shopping, whatever, um, your join link, you can link all that stuff. But I have Maven, I'll bring you back to Maven once again. And I have the social media buttons here at the top. So they can click the shopping bag to shop. They can click Facebook to go to Facebook and it brings them to my business page. So it does all the things that Linktree does as well, but I just love how it tags those posts I've made and, and people can shop right from them. Um, so you want your account to be public, of course, so people can find you. You want to have a clear profile picture. Mine's a little creative with the eye mask and the products, but you can just have like a nice picture of yourself. It should be your face. You want people to identify your brand with your face um, and share who you are and who you help and why people would want to follow you. Um, also give a call to action. Like you see here, I say follow Posh with Kelly, learn more. Um, I would have it say learn more, like click here to le learn more, but Instagram only gives you so many characters and I've used them all up. So you want to get focused on finding your tribe. You want to identify who you are, know who you are, and why you're doing this. Who do you want to help? Um, who are you speaking to? 
why would they come to your page? Why are they here? What do they need? So you need to think about that. Take some notes, figure it out, write it on paper if that helps you or just think in your head. Um, but ask yourself, who are my people? What are they into? What do they want to know? Um, what hashtags might they be searching for? And most of the time, it's easiest to identify with people just like yourself. You started using Posh because you love it, right? And it makes you feel great and it solves a problem with your skin or it just helps you relax or all of those things. Maybe you just want to connect with other people that are just like you that you know would love this product. Um, that's, I think, the easiest way to do it because you, you, you're already in your own head. You know what you're looking for so you can identify with those other people. So your goal with Instagram is to convert these followers into customers and hostesses and new teammates, right? So every post you make, you should post with purpose. The idea of following someone on Instagram is to get something out of it for yourself. So anyone you follow on Instagram, if they're posting a bunch of pointless posts or like dark pictures or blurry stuff or things that are just not relevant to you, you're probably going to unfollow them. Um, and you, once you bring someone in, you want them to stay. So be intentional with your posting, always provide some sort of value for them, whether it be education, entertainment, um, just something that makes them feel good. So identify your niche and block out everyone else, really target who you want to target and you'll see some results. Like I said before, people go on Facebook to connect with friends and family and people go on Instagram, possibly to connect with friends and family as well, but also they're much more apt to follow brands and bloggers. Um, so, but you can't treat it like Facebook and not put much effort into the content that you're posting. One thing you really, really, really should not do is take those pretty graphics that Home Office gives us and put them on Instagram. Don't do it. It's kind of spammy. It's an, it looks like an advertisement. Instagram is a photo sharing platform. That's how it was created. It was a place to share pictures, real pictures of our real lives. So it's a photo sharing platform. So share real photos. Um, you want to keep it real. You want to be authentic. You want people to identify it with you. So share your real photos. Stop selling, give people value. When you're posting graphics from home office, you're selling. When you're posting a picture of your new mask and the caption says all of the great things it did for your skin, you're sharing how that mask worked for you. And it's obvious because it's your own photo, maybe even with your face in it, even better. And you're sharing an experience and helping others through your experience. Um, you want to educate, share helpful tips, hacks, inspiration, tutorials, do ingredients training, um, teach and educate people. You also can be inspirational and motivational with quotes. I did say share photos, but I do see a lot of like pretty quotes with like a pretty background on Instagram. I think that's totally fine. I work in a quote um, or a, a, a non-photo, more like a graphic, but something I've made myself. I mostly use Word Swag, the app Word Swag to do that. Um, if I hear a great quote, I'll put it in. Here, I'll go back to the screen share and just show you a couple, couple things. Okay, so actually the last two that look sort of like quotes aren't actually quotes, but they are blocks of text. Um, this one in the second row that says giveaways, Posh with Kelly VIPs, I made that on Word Swag. And it was just an invitation to join my Facebook group. Not quite a motivational quote, but it looks like a quote, right? I had been posting lots of products in a row and I didn't want to do another product post. I wanted to break it up. So instead I did this, get glowing, and I said swipe. And so they notice swipe and then they can see my products. And my caption is pretty long for this one. Um, 
by the end of the winter, I'm feeling so pale and blah, posh to the rescue. And then it steps on using the body polish, some information about why you want to exfoliate, the polish I'm using and what it smells like and why I like the tanning lotion. And then at the end, it says both products are free from parabens, sulfates, phthalates, and petroleum, also cruelty-free and made in the USA. Now, that is a whole lot of info. I don't always do huge captions like that, but that one was a real educational post. Um, but if you notice, the picture right before it already had a whole bunch of products in it. The one before that had some samples. So I really wanted to highlight the fake it and the buff around the edges. So I did this get glowing post. Now, if you're scrolling through, you notice a lot of pictures of things that might not have to do with Posh. Um, my kids, my dogs, that's part of my brand. I'm, I'm a mom. I have two kids and I have two dogs and I'm, I'm actually see my dogs more than I see my kids. So I work that in, into my Instagram. Most of it is posh because this, this is my posh with Kelly account. It's not a personal account. Um, it is a lot of posh, but I do give people something to identify with. Um, think of five things about you that make you, you. Write them down. Five things, like top five things people would think about when they think about you. And um, things people would think about me would be my kids, my dogs, posh. Um, I do like to read. I like coffee and wine. I haven't posted about, I used to have a lot of pictures with like coffee cups in them and stuff. Like you can bring that into your brand, into your story, become a storyteller. Another tip for these posts is to use a call to action in your captions. Um, watch my Insta story, click the, uh, click the link in my profile to learn more. Cause I have mine, especially cause I have that Maven thing. That app again is called sell with Maven. It is amazing. And even the cap, even the, the pictures of my dogs, I tie it in to my brand. Okay. So here's this picture of my daughter and dog. The caption says this girl wasn't feeling well today. It touched my heart to see that she had a good buddy by her side. Once again, I was reminded of how grateful I am to have a job I can work from home so I can be there when my girls need me and to get and get to catch moments like this. So, and then I did hashtag because of posh. And you notice I put a few dots and then I do more hashtags at the bottom. Do some research on what hashtags the users that you're trying to attract are using. There's tons of information out there on Google. Um, Instagram uses hashtags to categorize content and make it discoverable. So that's how you found, find things on Instagram. I think more than anywhere else, people are using hashtags. And you have up to 30 to use. So I suggest use all 30. I didn't in this post, obviously, and I should have. And I can go back and edit it and add some more, even though I posted this two days ago. Um, but if you look at my hashtags I've got rescue pup in there I have Boston love because she has a Boston sweatshirt on that could bring in more people looking for those things and get me more likes more follows some, some um, comments all of that so you want to mix up your hashtags according to your content so that picture had my daughter and my dog so there were hashtags about mom life, dog mom, rescue pup. Um, and then in an inspirational quote, you might get more motivation fo focused hashtags. Do a mix of popular and less popular hashtags. As you're typing them in, it'll show like if it's been used 2 million times or if it's been used 2000 times. You want a, a couple of really popular ones. You want some that are less than a million, like a couple hundred thousand. Um, ones that only have like 32 hits aren't probably going to get you much traction, but you can you, you can mix it up because you have, because you can mix it up because you're allowed to use 30. You do want to hide your 
hashtags in the caption or the first comment. So like you just saw there, I did dot, 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 dot. Then I put a block of hashtags. It's hidden because the way that it pops up, they don't see it to begin with. Um, you want to keep your feed looking clean and pretty and easy to read. Or you can post it and then just put all your captions in the first comment if you want. I like the dots because then they hardly even get seen at all. Um, and another thing is don't use your hashtags in the caption. Like don't use a hashtag in the caption because it makes it hard to read. You know, like if you're putting hashtagged words in the middle of a sentence, it breaks it up and just makes it really weird to read and people don't like that and they, they'll just keep on scrolling and not pay attention to what you have to say. Another thing is like, don't use really long hashtags that don't make any sense and squish all your words together. That isn't gonna get you any, any value at all. People aren't going to be searching for that. They won't look at it, they won't find it. Um, there are two kinds of hashtags. There are branded hashtags and community hashtags. So my branded hashtag is Posh W Kelly. That is my social media handle across all platforms. It's how people can find me. You can encourage your customers to use your hashtag when they post about their products on social media and say and like tag you and say follow hashtag Posh W Kelly. Um, and then you can repost that, they'll get recognized. People love that. And then community hashtags are more general and they don't necessarily have anything to do with your company, um, but it makes your content more discoverable and build your audience. These are hashtags that people are going to be searching for like mom life, um, sick day. I just looked down at that one with the, the dog. Let me see what else I've, I've tried, okay. I have this, this one with some face products and I did anti-aging, hashtag made in the USA, hashtag cruelty-free beauty, I use that one a lot, hashtag spring skin, believe it or not, there were a couple thousand people who tagged spring skin. Um, those are things people would be searching for. But something I need to, be, I need to do, and it's an assignment for all of us, is to Google what hashtags people in our niche are using, and we're gonna have a different niche, or some of us will have the same type of niche, but Google what they're searching for, what they're using, and incorporate it into our hashtags. Now, if you use CinchShare, you can make a block of hashtags and save it, and then schedule posts to Instagram and put those hashtags in. Another way to do it, um, if you're not using CinchShare to schedule your Instagram post, you can, Save, it, save a block of hashtags in your notes section on your phone and just copy and paste. But it is good to mix them up as well. So don't just do those and only those, but ones you wanna put in every single post, type them out, copy, paste, makes it a lot easier. Okay, here is a really important tip. You want to be engaging with other people on Instagram way more than you are posting. It's super important. Um, we've got our goals down. We've got who we want to target. We know how to create good posts. Now you want to reach people and build your tribe. So the biggest, the biggest thing you need to be doing on Instagram, spending most of your time, is engaging with people. Um, check those hashtags, see what hashtags accounts you follow are using, especially if they relate to your niche. Um, here's, a daily, here's a daily activity you can do to build your account. Tap on a hashtag that's popular for your core audience. Find five to eight accounts, like, five or so pictures on each account and leave one meaningful comment on one of those pictures that you liked. So you, like pick an account, like a handful of pictures, not too many, like four or five, and then leave a real genuine comment, a whole sentence, not just love it, heart, whatever. Make it more than five words. Um, you can use emojis, be genuine not just leave a heart. 
leave these people a comment and give them a reason to engage back with you. <clears throat> Speaking of comments, when people leave comments on your photos, respond to every single one, even just to say thank you. And don't be afraid to direct message people that engage with your content and say hello. Don't just spam them with links and stuff, but just thank them for following your page and ask how you can help them. Just a really quick one or two sentence, hello, thank you so much for following me. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions about anything. I'm happy to help. Smiley face. Build that relationship before you start selling. Do not just throw links at them or go to my webpage, blah, blah, blah. There's a sale. If you do want to give them information about a sale or something time sensitive, ask them first. Say, hey, there is a really great sale going on. Would you like some more information? Ask them before you just send it to them. Okay, last tip, Insta Stories. Insta Stories is a lot like Snapchat, but people use Instagram way more than they use Snapchat, like millions of more followers. Stories are behind the scenes. They it's your behind the scenes life. Your pictures on Instagram should be thought out, beautiful, brightly lit, lovely to look at. Your stories can be more nitty gritty real life situations. They're so great at building a bond with people watching you and building that trust. Mix it up. You can do videos. You can do still pictures. You can do blocks of text. You can throw funny stickers in there. Um, every day you should aim to have six to eight slides within one story. And I say every day, you don't have to have a story every single day, but your story lives on Instagram for 24 hours. So when you're posting an Instagram story, don't just do one picture because it goes away so fast, it's not gonna get people's attention. You wanna have about six to eight different slides in a row posted within a relative short amount of time, and that will last in your story for 24 hours. And if you can't commit to doing something every day, I strongly suggest doing it at least twice a week. If you have something on there that's super great and you don't want it to disappear, you can save it as a highlight. Let me show you my highlight. When, you cl when somebody clicks on your profile picture, your stories will play. And it's also shown at the top of the main Instagram feed. This is, by the way, this is perfect timing. This is Allison Faulkner, The Allison Show. Her Instagram and her stories have built her an empire. She just makes herself super relatable. She um, posts snippets of her everyday life. She has really long captions in her store, in her posts. So you learn more about her. Let me click on, whoops. Let me click on her name so you can see like what her feed looks like. She sells herself and her workshops, so her Instagram is very focused on pictures of her because she sells herself as the product. Uh, look at my profile. This just this song was going through my head and I needed to share it with somebody. You can post a poll. Now notice this has nothing to do with Posh. I was ready to go to bed at like 9.30 and then I sat down in my office and now it's almost one o'clock. How does that happen? Must be because I love my job so much and I love my team. I have been scheduling things to post on our team page all night long. So that's my current story. And yes, I'm wearing the same sweatshirt I had on last night. I had put it on very late last night, took it off before I went to bed and I put it on again this morning. So deal with it but that's my current story and that's going to disappear in 24 hours you know just a little snippet into my life some silly stuff i did work in uh something about being a team leader there you could see some posh in the background but if you look here where these pink bubbles are these are my highlights and i got a package from the you deserve it foundation and i love to tell people about our you deserve it foundation because it makes people feel really good about buying posh so i'm going to click on this one that says be the good and you can see this story that i saved into my highlights
The purchase of this tote bag benefits the You Deserve It Foundation. That's Posh's nonprofit organization. And our current mission is um, the people of Guatemala who make our sustainable palm oil. Hush. All right, so the You Deserve It Foundation um, is fundraising money for the Center of Human Development in Southwestern Guatemala. Your support and donation will help provide treatment and nutritional supplements to the malnourished infants and toddlers of the working mothers in rural Guatemala. So we take this tote around and we use it as a tool to educate and raise awareness for responsibly sourced palm oil and how good business supports sustainability. Um, our products contain our products contain responsibly sourced palm oil, and you can feel good about using our products. So that is my You Deserve It highlight. And that was just on my story one day, but I didn't want it to disappear. So I put it in the highlight, and anyone can just click on that and watch it and learn more about it. Um, now, I have another one on there that says ingredients, and I, anytime I do an ingredient focus in my story, I can save it to the ingredients one, and you can take stuff in and out of there. Um, my advice is just to get into the app and play with it and figure it out. If you have any questions, like if you're really stuck with something, ask me. I'm pretty, pretty savvy with how to use Instagram and all of these tools, but you can also Google it and see all the tips and tricks. You might really, you might learn something cool I don't know about yet. Another tip is to go into your Instagram account and see the people you follow and check out their stories and see what other people are doing. And then um, the more you hang out and engage with people, you should also, if some people have commenting turned off on their stories, but if they don't, every now and then, every couple of days, just send like a little encouraging, whatever, a little message to them and it will go into their Instagram messages because you do want to engage with people. Here's a fun fact. 72% of people would rather watch a video to learn about a product than any other method, read about it, whatever. Video is the next generation. And these Instagram stories are a very quick, easy, non-threatening way to get your face on video and talk to your prospective customers. And once people get to know you, you're going to charm them and engage them and entertain them and they'll convert into customers and hostesses and join your team, yay! My last thought is building a community on Instagram that converts into paying customers does take time, but it builds a solid business foundation. In the end, my dogs are going crazy. In the end, that is going to bring you in money and take less time overall. Instagram is quick, it's easy, it's fun. And don't expect overnight success with it, but if you just stay consistent with it, it will pay off eventually. Follow other people you love, emulate them, don't copy, don't be a copycat, be you. Use other people's ideas for inspiration, but make sure it's your own. That's all I've got. Thanks so much for watching.